So let's let's think of a question someone might have, and I, I just thought about one. Sure. What if the seller doesn't own the property outright? Right, and if there was a mortgage in place, sure. Yes, if that's the case, the this money all this money that you bring to the table is mm -hmm. going to have to pay off that original loan. You're not going to be able to take that loan over subject to. Uh, okay, that is a good question then for sure. So, all right, yeah. You're going to have to pay off that original loan. Why? Can you think of why? Pay off. Uh, if the seller has a mortgage, position. it's got to be paid off. Why is that? Is it based on the position of? Yes. Yeah, okay. So you got to Yes, because <laughs> your lender, who's bringing 70% of your money, yeah, will not allow another position on the property. So another lien position yeah. on the property when the transaction closes. Right. But after the transaction closes, you can add lien position. Correct. That's the trick. Yeah, makes sense. You cannot tell your mortgage company that you're going to have another lien position. Mm -hmm. You have to do it in a separate transaction. Oops, makes sense. Any other questions that have come your way? <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm trying to think yeah. if there are any more. So one question someone might ask is, how do you find a sponsor for your loan? People who, who lend private money and who do transactional lending typically will also sponsor loans. Mm -hmm. And usually they're going to want 20 to 30% of the deal. Right. And they're going to want an exit strategy. So they're going to, they're going to want, let's say 20% of the cat, the net cash flow for two years. And they're going to want you to, to refi it. Mm-hmm. So they're going to help you get this loan and give you enough time to get liquidity and a good credit score. They're going to give you enough time to do all those things. And then you have to refi them out. Now, they are not technically bringing money and putting it in your pocket. They are only signing this loan for you. They're getting the loan for you on their good credit and on their bank account. Correct. So that's what a sponsor does. Right. The private money lenders typically in a transaction that is somewhere, let's say above sixty thousand dollars to one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty. Mm -hmm. The common fee that I see is a five thousand dollar fee. Right. If it's less than sixty thousand, I usually will try to negotiate that. I will try to start out at like fifteen hundred, because okay. when you're poor and you have a certain mindset about money, you think. $50,000 is a lot of money, but to rich people, $50,000 is not a lot of money, especially if they're just going to give it to you for a day. For sure. And, and they will be happy sometimes to give you $50,000 for a day and receive $1,500 in return. Mm -hmm. uh, they may negotiate back and they may say, no, I want 3000. Right. But those are kind of the, the terms. That 5, we, that, <laughs> yeah. Those are the kind of terms that I typically see. As far as lenders, you can Google DSCR mm -hmm. and you can, you can apply. There's quite a few of them. What about if you have credit issues? I know you said that typically they don't really look at that um, if you have somebody with you, but, but you're saying basically to team up, right? Or JV with somebody else or the sponsor basically using their name? Some name. of them have a lower threshold. Mm -hmm. So, so, okay. Like I've seen them go as low as maybe a five, I mean, a, a 620. Mm -hmm. credit score so shop around yep somebody might even go lower than that i haven't had to shop around for that because my credit score is not low but yes if, if it was i'd shop around because you never know these you have to once you get experience in this industry you realize people want your business these yeah. people want to give you money now yeah. when i was poor and i didn't have two nickels to rub together i didn't understand that I thought I was coming like a little groveling servant. Please give me a loan. No, these people want to give you a loan. That's how they make a living. For sure. So it's a business. They are lending money for a business and they have a lot of money to lend. So shop around. You never know. Everyone has different criteria. Yeah, makes sense. 
I'm not thinking of any other questions, but so we'll uh, talking points on uh, on the strategy to to kind of win over the seller on on going this route. Yes, yeah. great point. That is such a good point. Yeah, yeah. Why will a seller do a Morby method transaction? Yes. All right. So number one, their house is not ready for the retail market. Okay. So it needs a lot of work. Okay. Number two, they have some situation with the property that a normal lender will not lend on the property. Okay. For example, a detached dwelling unit. Mm. Like, let's say you have a house and you have a mother in law suite. Um, or a temporary building where someone's living that you're renting out or a mobile home. Yeah. A normal John and Jill and Jane are not going to be able to go out and get a loan and buy your property. If you have a mobile home sitting across the driveway. Okay. You're going to have to move that off the property. That's going to cost you money. You're going to have to dig up the septic system, clean out the electrical and put sod down and right. make the yard look nice to sell on the retail market. So those are issues, right? Right. Those are issues. Another issue is the house has been listed for a long time and hasn't sold yet. And the seller is stuck on a number. So they're getting offers at 185, 190, 180, 187, but they are stuck. They will not go lower than $215,000. That's a perfect candidate for a Morby method. Yeah. Because you could come in and say, I'll pay you $215,000 and you'll get 70% of that money in your pocket. All you have to do is seller finance me 30%. Now, that's, that's, these are reasons. Other reasons are people don't want to pay capital gains tax on all the money. So I'm using this number 70% because that's what the bank is bringing to the table or the mortgage company is bringing to the table. But actually the seller doesn't have to take all that money. So there's a capital gains, there's taxes. Another thing that a tip that we always use because people are worried about, well, what happens if you don't pay me? What happens if you default? Yes, okay? all the time. So if you default... Um, first of all, you know, you always say, look, here's the thing. We use an escrow service company to pay you. We do not sit at our desk and write checks to pay people because we are an investment company and we have lots of properties. So we hire a note servicing company to draft our account and pay all our bills every month. Mm -hmm. The note servicing company will settle people down. We will calm people down. And you let them know every single note in the country is serviced by a note. Every single major, major mortgage in the country is serviced by a note servicing company. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and sometimes you tell people, pull up your mortgage, your loan document, pull up your, even just your bank, your mortgage statement, and you will see in fine print, it will typically say in fine print, it might say Wells Fargo in big giant print and right underneath that in fine print, it's going to say serviced by, right. You know, Carolina note servicing company or something like that. Every major mortgage company does this. So you are behaving and performing like a major player, a major professional in the industry right. by yeah. using a note servicing company. If the note servicing company can't, draft your account and pay that bill, they're going to be calling the seller immediately. Usually if it's like the last one I did was an inheritance situation. And it's usually one person out of the group who is just very difficult to convince. Absolutely. Yes. I've seen it happen many times. Yeah. And um, so, you know, ultimately I had to get this person and say, look, I'll buy the house cash, but it's going to be $180,000. Yes. Period. And no one else is going to be able to come here. No first time home buyer can come here and buy this property because you got a mobile home sitting on it. Right. So you can pay 
to get the mobile home moved and mitigate the land and all this stuff you're going to have to do to put it in the retail market. And then uh, people are going to bring a home inspector in here and they're going to point out every single thing that's wrong with this house. They're going to ask you for even a lower price. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even if you list it at 220, you're not going to get that far. Right. Or I'll give you 220, right? Yeah. I'll give you 220 if you work with me. I'm going to give you everything you want. How long did it take for you to convince them? A couple conversations. I'm sure. Probably yeah. three. Yeah. Good job. And and some of, of what I'm saying is all these things that I'm saying that are coming out of my mouth depend on the situation, depend on the deal, depend on who's in second position, who's in first position. You could do a Morby method where you create an LLC with the seller. Mm-hmm. And you basically, instead of putting them in second position, you, so let's say you have an LLC and the LLC is named, you know, one, two, three main street, which is also happens to be the property address. And you and the seller both are the members of the LLC. Hmm. And in that operating agreement of the LLC, it says, if you don't pay this person, you will leave the LLC and they take back over ownership of the LLC, which is the property, right? Yeah. That's a way to protect them. Right. So the way Pace just told me that how to do this last Sunday, because I have this problem on another deal I'm trying to do. The seller is totally cool with doing a seller finance on their 30%, but they do not want second position. Hmm. So the solution for that is to do an LLC together. Okay. And the operating agreement in the LLC, what it says is it says basically I'm buying that person out monthly. And when I get to the end of what I owe that person, they're out of the LLC. They have to exit. And now it's just me. And That's I own awesome. the property. But if I default, I got to leave the LLC and they take over. Right. So that's how you protect people. Yeah, that's another, that's a great way too. That's awesome. All right, let's wrap it up because I got to make some offers. I try to make five offers a day. There you go. Sounds good. <laughs> way to go. Well, I, right. I certainly appreciate it. I think you've given a ton of information here. I'm ready to go make some offers myself. Let's do Sweet. it. <laughs> have a good weekend. Yes, you too. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.